So first up, we are going to open up our element managers, log into Red Hat, log into Power Store, and log into PPDM. As you can see here is our file system storage, a red hat. So let's go deploy, create a simple project, very straightforward. Give it a name, PPD de PPDM demo. Just see if our storage classes are in CSI or configured correctly. And they are, and we're going to create a persistent volume claim here off the power storage class. So power store NFS, give it a name, read, write many, and we'll give a really small size, five gig, a volume of file system and click create. So here we go, bound. So we set this to automatically bind without attaching it to a pod. So you can see the persistent volume claim there that's created and you can also see the file system that's going to be created in power store that has been created rather so you can see it there so csi via api is provisioned the volume and we have five giga free space so next up we're going to deploy a really really complicated um application it's just, just one pod Right, so it'll serve a purpose. We'll write some data to that later on, just to display some persistence. So use the import YAML tool there on the OpenShift console. And container creating, and it's up and running. Right, you can see down below it's attached to the PVC and you can see the backing storage and so on. Right, so you can see the mount point, mount, mount forward slash storage. So next up we'll add um, PPDM to, uh, to OpenShift or OpenShift to PPDM rather as an asset source. There's a couple of bits to this process, um, but before we do that, you'll see here what we'll do. Right, before we add, what we're going to do is just go to the download section download the following to your local machine extract and you'll be left with three files all right so this or back folder you can see there are downloaded to the local machine so it's two different yamls here one discovery yaml and an back yaml there's also an, uh, a readme file which i know everybody doesn't read but it's really important we read this because it contains the yaml file that's used to um to uh, extract the secret when we're done and we use the secret then to connect to um, connect to uh, PPDM all right it's a copy to PPDM to the clipboard go back into our OpenShift YAML editor again couldn't be simpler copy paste if I can do this <laughs> right trust me anybody can Paste the contents in, click create. And we can see here a success on the right. All right, so just the roles and whatnot, I think people can read here, right? So again, for the next YAML, controller.orbach.yaml. Again, creates roles, bindings, so on. Now you hit a small error here, right? I must feed back to some of the product teams around this. Um, but it's not a, it, it'll just try and recreate the PowerProtect namespace again, obviously, since it's already there. Um, it'll, it'll, you'll get a slight error, but it doesn't matter, we can proceed. Or we call them Project Stummy in the OpenShift world. Right, so that's fine, we can ignore that. All 
So next up again, embedded in the README file, right? With the red arrow, <laughs> right? Um, just copy and paste. I'm going to redact the end of file at the end because I'll error out. But straight into the straight into the import YAML file or YAML editor in when in OpenShift. Copy paste, and now you'll, it's generated the service account token. We'll scroll down to the bottom and copy and paste the uh, token or copy the token. All right, back into PPDM. Now we can add it as an asset source proper. So click add, give it a name. I've called it OC11 here for my cluster. Give it the API address, redact the HTTP header. Port 6443, let's create the credential, give it any name. And then here we paste in the token we've just extracted from OpenShift. Click save. And verify the certificate. Accept. And now it'll kick off the discovery process. This will take a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds. So the configuration job will have to kick off and it starts pulling the available namespaces or projects in OpenShift, um, in OpenShift uh, as part of the discovery process. So here you can see after a couple of minutes, and we can do our search. Let's go search for the namespace or project that we have configured or created, and you can see it there, right? So it's 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 not protected at the moment; it's in an unprotected state. Okay. So next up is let's create a protection policy for this namespace. Again, very straightforward. Crash consistent. Add the assets. Now we're going to add them all. Well, all within that namespace. We'll see that in a second. Do a search here for PPD demo. Click next. Add a primary backup. And you can see here now, this is where data domain is. So that's our DDV our backing it. And we haven't dug into this yet. All right. So DDV is the backing storage. So a full backup. We'll say every eight hours retain for one day. Click save, next, and finish. All right. So PPDM will go off and configure this policy for us. So it should be ready in a couple of seconds. But what we'll do is we'll trigger this manually, all right? Because we want to do the demo here. I don't want to wait until it kicks off. So we're going to kick this off manually. In a second, we'll just wait till that configuration job finishes. Yeah, so now we can protect now. Full backup, this is the first full, first backup we've done. Protect. And it goes off and does the process of the protection, right? So you can see here in the video that I fast forward it, but if you're BDI'd, you'll see the C proxy being deployed as the data mover in the power in, in the power protect namespace in OpenShift. And then when it's finished, it deletes or pulls back down that pod, the data mover pod, transparent, transparent to the user. All right, so you can see here, the process here on the right of what's gone through. So now we have OpenShift connected to our PPD, uh, OpenShift as an asset source in PPDM. Uh, and we've created a namespace, we've done a demo, we've done a demo pod application, right? But so let's put something in the application and fail it over. So I'm not an application developer, so this is the best it gets. So I'm just going to write something to a file. <clears throat> so that, that forward slash mount forward slash storage um, path. All right, we've saved that. And we're going to run the job again because this has got a new, this got, there's a change to the copy. Or change the file rather. So we're just going to run another another manual backup. Again, we could wait for the eight hours until whenever it kicked it off, but we'll do this quickly here. We'll run the job. Okay, fast forwarding again. Now I did slow down this time to see you can see the C proxy here being deployed. Right, so subject for another video, I think we'll um, we'll take dig, dig deeper deeper into what that does.
Yep. All right, so uh, error, all right? So what happens if we accidentally delete the OpenShift namespace? All right, so luckily we have a backup to the rescue, right? So it happens, so sometimes it could happen or we could lose everything or we could just inadvertently delete the namespace. So here we're just gonna delete the namespace. Or delete the project. I keep on saying project. All right, so delete the project. And this will pull down everything, right? It'll obviously, it'll pull down pods, it'll pull down the whole lot, everything associated with the, with the project, including the PVC. If it pulls down the PVC, it'll also trigger the deletion of that file system on PowerStore. And we'll see that in a second. So we'll be left with nothing. Yep, everything terminated, so our PVC is gone, and we'll go over to PowerStore here, and we'll see, yep, just to double check on the file systems, and we'll see that file system has also disappeared, gone. So let's kick off the recovery workflow on PPDM, so of the copy we just created. Again, we can just manually do this recovery, very simple, we're going to restore to a new namespace, restore everything, uh, everything associated with the namespace. So we're going to give this name ppdm-restore. We could have given it its own name because it's gone as well, right? Um, existing PVC, and off we go. So this again does the reverse process. It'll install the C proxy. It'll push the data to to um, from from uh, ppdm via from uh, DDV back to OpenShift. Fast forward again. Let's log back into OpenShift and see what it's doing here. Again, on the PowerProtect namespace, I'm going to put it down here. Yeah, so you can see our C proxy there as well. All right, so the C proxy is spun up in the PowerProtect uh, namespace. Uh, in order to push push the data back into the OpenShift cluster. All right, so C proxy has been deleted, pull back, so the data is moved. So you can see here that it's a hundred percent successful. So everything should be back in that new namespace we've created, or project rather, we have created. So let's see if it works. So back in, we go into OpenShift. Here's our new namespace. Here's our pod. All right. So let's take a look in the terminal in a second of the pod. And our file should be still the same. So let's cat to this file. Now this could be an application or whatnot, so it's still the same, it serves the same process or shows the same example. Name say pod and application should be up and running. And we can see here. Very slow typer, I gave it a very long name. And there we go, all good. So thanks for joining the uh, or listening to the video. Um, here's to the next time.